welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Argon 1 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. This offers passive and active cooling, it adds a power button, and it also puts all of the connectors on one edge at the back of the case to keep things tidy. There's even a magnetic cover for GPIO pins, and I've heard rumours this thing also makes tea. Well, it probably doesn't make tea, but regardless it does all those other things I've mentioned, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Argon 1 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. And this costs about $25 or £21, although the, the price does seem to vary quite a lot between different vendors. So let's get inside. I think we have to just flick it over like this, and there's a thing we can bring in Stanley the knife and just cut through. There we are. Hopefully now we can get in. Top comes open, I hope. Oh, there we are. Yes. It's always exciting to open a sealed box, isn't it? Oh, ooh, and here we are. This is the uh, Argon one. Get that out of the way over there. Get it out of a little bag. Crinkle, crinkle. There we are. I think the top here is a uh, aluminium. It's, it's a metal top of the case, and the base is uh, transparent. Oh, we've got inside, sort of by accident. And there was also here. This I think is an extender board for uh, HDMI and audio. Let's get that open. Get in there. Come on, come on, come on. There we are. Get that out. And uh, there we are. It doesn't want to come out. It doesn't want to come out. It's stuck. Deary me, can't get the thing out. There we are. Failed at the first hurdle. But there we are, that's our, our audio extender board. And then there's another board here which is pre-mounted in the case, which clearly connects to the GPIO connector. Power goes in by that, I think. And there's a fan here, and this is the, the temperature controlled fan. And then we've also got here a little bag containing some uh, thermal pads, I think, and some feet and screws and things like that. And it might be interesting to compare this case to the, uh, the Flerk case I've looked at in the past. Here's the Flerk case, which I've used several times before. This is the Kodi edition of the Flerk case. If we open that up, you see it has a lug in the Flerk case, which contacts the system on the chip on the Raspberry Pi to, uh, to give it passive cooling. But if we look what we've got in the Argon 1, we've got two of these, two of these lugs for both the system on the chip, and I assume that will go to the, the USB controller, which gets quite warm on, on the Pi 4. So we've got passive cooling there and active cooling, obviously, via the fan. So uh, this will end up back together with the Pi inside it. We've got here on the back, this is the uh, GPIO cover, I think, which I think is magnetic. Does this come off? It does. Oh, it does. Oh, it's even labelled. That's rather good, isn't it? So that's a... Uh, oh, yes, you can see the magnets under that. We'll flip back a... Uh, in there, and all the connectors will end up at the back of the board like that. So we've got all the different uh, pieces here. All we now need to do is to put these things together. So I've now done a full itinerary of parts, which includes this little manual, which was hiding in the box, which shows us how to put everything together nice and uh, straightforwardly. And uh, here I've got the two silicon thermal pads, which will go on the lugs in the case. And we've got two sets of screws, uh, small and longer screws to put in to hold it all together. And these will be, uh, you can probably can't see those yet, but these are actually uh, little feet to stick on the base of the case. So I think the first thing we need to do is to take our uh, Pi 4 and to fit it with the uh, audio breakout board that brings all connectors to the front. In fact, before I do that, I've just noticed I've not taken out my micro SD card. Best to take that out before we fit things in the case. And then this, in theory, just plugs in here like this, which will extend the audio and uh, HDMI connectors. Does that go in like that? That's gone in very, very solid. That's pretty good. So now I've got a pie with all the connectors at the front. And so we can now go back to the case itself. Here it is. And I think next we need to put the thermal pads onto a here. So I'll grab the, the thermal pads, put those on, get rid of a little stuff. Maybe I'll just speed through this. It'll take me a second. And uh, there we are. Those are ready. Not quite sure why they're both the same size, but that's what's uh, come with the case. And uh, now we have to take our board, and I think it fits in like that. Let's flick it round so you can probably see it better. That way you can see what's going on at the front. And that will fit in to actually line up with the GPIO pins. Hopefully this is going to be slightly tricky, I imagine, to get this in exactly the right place. But uh, let me just, oh, it's a little bit of a tight fit there. But it has to fit in 
it's a very tight fit there. Um, get in your little swipe, oh there we are. And my GPO connectors need to line up here, which I think they're going to do. Oh, there we are, that's it. There we are, thought that wasn't going in, but it's going in and um, that seems to have fitted pretty well, that's uh, in, in there like that. So uh, getting more solid, let's flick you back that way. I'll keep turning you around today, don't I? And uh, we now need to put in some uh, small screws and then we put in the uh, large screws after that. So uh, let's start out first of all with the, uh, the small screws. In fact, we have to start with the small screws because they're the ones that go in inside the case. So let's take the first one. I think one goes down here like this. There we are, that seems good and solid. And the other three here, I think, go into the uh, little uh, HDMI board. So there's a screw there, like that. Oh, this is a nice, uh, straightforward bit of construction. It's not the same as building a, a new i7 PC, is it? But it's uh, it's got a little bit of construction feel to it. It's always nice to do a bit of construction -y stuff. That goes in there, like that. And uh, final screw will go in like... Uh, well, like that as well, isn't it? There we are, screw going in. I normally fast forward through screws going in, but I've been talking to you, I've been talking gibberish as those have been going in. And uh, we can now take the uh, top of the case, which I think that's the, there we are, that's a little cutout for the uh, SD card to go into. That will just drop on like that. That's pretty good, isn't it? So we'll now just put on the, uh, the top screws. And there we are, this is the, uh, the last one. It's now all together. It's a uh, very shiny black plastic on the base of this. It uh, reminds me a bit of Darth Vader's helmet, except it's actually translucent. Imagine if Darth Vader's helmet had been slightly translucent, how much more money they've had to have spent on effects then. Anyway, that's gone together very nicely. We can put the GPO cover back on the top. I took it off for safekeeping. Clips on with its little magnet there. And uh, finally, our SD card can go into the uh, SD card slot. If I can find it over here, is that gonna go in? It is hopefully like that. Oh yes, that's very good. And uh, there we are. We have uh, fitted the Raspberry Pi 4 into the uh, Argon 1 case. Oh, we've forgotten the feet, haven't we? Deary, deary me, how remiss of me. We've forgotten the little sticky feet. Got to put the sticky feet on. There we are, it's now properly sticky feeted. So that it'll be nice and, or you can have a different sort of thump onto the desk now with those uh, fitted. And uh, it is really a very stylish case. It's great, of course, to have all the connectors at the front so we don't have to sort of hunt around and have them from different sides. And we've also got this power button, which uh, is in theory going to work there. But in fact, to make the power button work and to make the, uh, the cooling work with the temperature control fan, we have to install some software on the Pi. So I think what we'll now do is to get all this thing connected up and to install the aforementioned software. Right, I've now plugged in the Pi's power adapter. Nothing has happened, so I presume we have to press the switch to turn the Pi on. There's no clear indication we've done that. The fan hasn't come on. I'm not sure it's supposed to yet. But uh, if we look at the front of this case, we can see the Pi's internal power LED is shining. We can see it through the clear plastic at the front. This does all make me think, why is the power button at the back of the case where all the connectors go in? Why isn't it on the front of the case, which is where you normally have a power button, where when you press it, you can see the, the indicator LED. Anyway, ignoring that, here we are now having arrived on the Raspbian desktop, where we can install the script to uh, run on the Argon 1 to control the uh, fan, the temperature control fan, and to give all sorts of functionality to the power button. I'm not sure I like having a software control power button. I'd rather have a physically controlled power button, just a physical switch on the front of the case, but that's not what we've got. We have to install the script. And it's worth pointing out this script will only work in certain operating systems like Raspbian. So what we have to do is to run up a terminal, which we'll get there. And then we have to run a script, which by the magic of filmmaking is waiting to be run there. So we'll execute our script. And there we are, something is happening. Again, I'd rather not do things this way. I'd rather download a script myself and have a look at it and run it directly online. But this is the way the one thing's done. It's certainly very convenient, but I guess I always like to know exactly what's happening on a computer I'm using. But uh, there we are, things are uh, happening. That's uh, done it. Some shortcuts have indeed appeared on the desktop and the manual tells you to uh, reboot at this point. So we will uh, do that. We will shut down and uh, reboot the Pi. 
And uh, yes, I could have done that using the terminal, couldn't I? But I didn't. I did it using the, the graphical means as I decided to do. Anyway, the Pi will now come back, so we'll just speed through the boot process. And uh, here we are arriving back on the desktop, and we can now presumably uh, run the Argon 1 configuration, which will come up there. It's, oh, it's just a script. We just execute from there. And this is what? Oh, look, Argon 1 fan speed configuration tool. Very exciting. Let's press a Y to continue. And what do we get? We get always on as an option, so I'll lean in towards the thing and press always on for 1 and... Uh, Yes, the fan has come on. It's quite a small fan. It's a fairly high pitch. Not that noisy. I've heard uh, better. This fan is massively louder than, for example, the Pimeroni fan shim, but it's not as loud as, for example, a jumbo jet. So let's try another one. Let's go to uh, configuration again, execute. Let's try a temperature control this time, uh, which is number two, isn't it? There we are. And uh, in the manual, there are various temperatures we're supposed to put in here, or at least the defaults. Strange there isn't an option to have the default. We'll have 10 there and 55 apparently there. That's a good number, isn't it? And a 100% fan above 65 degrees. Put that in. Yes, the fan's gone down. So presumably the fan is now being temperature controlled. And in theory, we've got all this functionality on that software power button at the front, the one I don't really like. Again, if we look in the manual, you see there's all sorts of functionality attributed to the power button. But for now, I'm going to ignore that. I'd just rather it wasn't there. But I am very interested in how well this case will perform with cooling. So I think it's now time to run my standard cooling test. So the moment of truth has now arrived. I'm going to run my standard temperature test script, which is a, this one here. I've used in many previous Raspberry Pi 4 cooling videos. And if I bring up this table, this uh, shows you some of the results I've had from other cooling solutions I've tried using a Noctua fan and a heat sink, the Pimeroni fan shim, the ice towel cooler, the flirt case we looked at earlier, and the uh, two-part heat sink case, which is becoming very popular. So we can compare the results from the Argon 1 to these results. And uh, we'll just briefly look at the script here. What this basically does is that uh, it clears the screen and then it runs a little loop here. It takes a temperature measurement. It uses a sysbench to uh, stress out the Pi's CPU cores by factoring prime numbers to a value of uh, 25,000. And then it takes another temperature measurement and it keeps doing this. So we get a range of temperature measurements over a course of about 10 minutes. This test should last 10 minutes if the Pi doesn't throttle. So uh, let's get rid of that. And here the script is ready to roll. So we'll uh, execute the test. And uh, there we are. It's finished and a, a very impressive set of results. And in fact, the fan hasn't come on at all. And uh, if I actually touch the top of the case, it's, uh, it's pleasantly warm. It hasn't got incredibly hot. So the passive cooling here, at least over the length of this particular tester, works very well indeed. And uh, if we actually look at the table and we somehow squeeze those results on the end for the Argon 1, you see it's a, a very good performance. I should say I think the ambient here today is slightly cooler than I've used previously. I think it's 23 in this room today, 22, 23, something like that. I think it was 24, 25 when I did the other tests back last summer. But even so, that wouldn't affect the placement of the Argon 1, which is beaten by the, the ice tower and by my own Noctua and uh, heat sink uh, sort of contraptions and, and rig. But uh, other than that, it's clearly beaten the, uh, the fan shim from Pi Moroni and the, the flirt case and the, the uh, heat sink case. So uh, my conclusion from this is that the uh, Argon 1 is a very good passive cooling solution for the, the Raspberry Pi 4. And indeed, what I would now do is to uh, uninstall the script for the uh, Argon 1, which will uh, get rid not just of the fan controller, which we clearly don't need, but which will also get rid of all that horrible stuff it's done to the power button. So it just turns it on and off in a, a slightly lesser contrived fashion. The Argon 1 is a stylish, robust, and highly functional case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Personally, I still prefer some of the other case and cooling solutions I've looked at and even constructed here on the channel over the past six to eight months, and I'm not a big fan of software-controlled power buttons. But uh, those points aside, if you want to use a Raspberry Pi 4, particularly as a small desktop PC, the Argon 1 case makes it look the part and works very well on your desk. 
But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.